The solar energy race is heating up in a bid to accelerate the growth of the renewable energy sector. And the photovoltaic industry is a key component of the renewable energy sector, accounting for 90% of global output. Elon Musk has also previously revealed a groundbreaking silicon-based energy battery that can recycle up to 85% of silicon material for next-generation batteries with low operating costs and a seemingly endless supply of energy. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. So far, silicon is the most common semiconductor material used in solar cells, accounting for about 95% of the modules sold today. It is also the second most abundant material on Earth and the most common semiconductor used in computer chips. Crystalline silicon cells are made up of silicon atoms that are connected together to form a crystal lattice. This lattice provides an organized structure that helps to make the conversion of light into electricity more efficient. As you know, standard silicon photovoltaic solar cells are the black and copper panels that you can find on suburban roofs and solar farms. They were invented and developed in the United States in the 1950s. Currently, 90% of solar panels in the world are made from crystalline silicon, and the industry continues to grow at a rate of about 30% per year. How would low costs make this type of energy popular? According to Tesla, profits from the Energy Production and Storage Division nearly quadrupled in 2023 compared to the year before. The deployment of energy storage more than doubled during that period, reaching 14.7 gigawatt hours in 2023. A survey of Texas residents showed that the cost of the electricity grid at the end of 2023 was 16 cents per kilowatt hour, a 20% increase from the same period in 2022. For Tesla solar panels, using electricity for devices such as heating during cold winter months, air conditioning, TVs and baking appliances, would consume electricity at a cost of zero dollars per month. Installing new solar panels is like making an upfront payment for your future electricity usage costs. Therefore, we can overlook installation costs and focus on monthly expenses. On average, a household in Texas consumes 1170 kilowatt hours per month, equivalent to 14,040 kilowatt hours per year. Ultimately, you could save $2,246 based on an average electricity price of around $0.16 cents when switching to solar energy. A large Tesla solar energy system with a capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours can produce an average of 60 kilowatt hours per day with 4.5 hours of sunlight, which is also very useful for system sizing considerations. Tesla's silicon solar roof and solar panels utilize solar cells to harness sunlight and convert it into electricity, whereas traditional solar panels are simply larger versions of rooftop solar panels. Additionally, solar panels are an integrated component of the roof, while Tesla's solar roof is a complete solar energy roofing system that replaces your existing roofing materials. The installation of Tesla solar energy panels is significantly cheaper compared to the solar roof, However, the premium product comes at a higher price than other solar panels on the market. For an average single-story 2,000-square-foot home, the cost of installing Tesla solar panels is around $40,000, while the solar roof is priced at $111,400 for the same home before federal incentives. Furthermore, the electric vehicle market seems to be paying considerable attention to solar charging so we have a small comparison to illustrate the importance of these enhanced solar energy panels. The average monthly electricity cost for an electric car in the United States depends on various factors, including the cost of electricity in the area, the driving habits of the owner, and the efficiency of the electric car. On average, electric vehicles consume around 30 kilowatt hours per 100 miles driven. To estimate the cost, we can consider the national average residential electricity price in the United States, which is approximately 16 cents per kilowatt hour. Meanwhile, a Model 3 would consume about 28 kilowatt hours for 100 miles driven, and on average, a person would drive 60 miles per day, equivalent to 1,800 miles per month if no long trips are taken, which would consume 500 kilowatt hours per month. 
Therefore, the average monthly electricity bill for an electric car in the United States would be around $80. 16 cents for a kilowatt hour times 500 kilowatt hours. However, it's important to note that this is just an estimate and actual costs will vary based on the aforementioned factors. Silicon has long been touted as a promising candidate for the positive electrode anode in lithium ion batteries because it can store up to 10 times the amount of lithium ions per unit weight compared to graphite. In fact, the use of silicon as a lithium battery anode was recorded before graphite. Now, after about 15 years of continuous improvements and dashed hopes, the time for silicon to become the main material in the ultimate battery has arrived. Tesla is said to have added up to 5% silicon to the battery anode, but they want to go further with this because of its immensely high efficiency. That's why Tesla will continue to stick with the technology of incorporating silicon into their energy panels. Importantly, after each day of using an electric vehicle, you can return home and replenish some of the lost energy, around 28 kilowatt hours, and at that point, solar energy panels can fully supply enough power for charging the car. What efficiency does this silicon PV module bring? There are several reasons why silicon is a preferred material in solar panels. One of the key factors for using silicon in solar panels is its energy-saving capability. Silicon has the ability to convert the sunlight it receives into electricity. The efficiency of solar panels is the amount of sunlight falling on the panel surface that's converted into electricity. Due to significant advancements in photovoltaic technology in recent years, the average conversion efficiency of solar panels has increased from 15% to over 22%. This remarkable leap in efficiency has led to the power output of standard size panels increasing from 250 watts to over 420 watts. Moreover, Tesla's solar roof system provides 29.3 kilowatts of power, meaning the system can harness that amount of electrical power whenever the sunlight's present. Tesla's solar roof comprises of two parts, solar energy tiles and the power wall battery system. Together, they can be used as an independent energy source or as part of an existing solar energy system. Tesla's solar roof system has the capability to produce an average of 121.4 kilowatt hours per day. Although there are other materials used in energy production, silicon has been proven to be an energy efficient material with high reliability. Another important factor when using silicon in solar panels is its ability to enhance efficiency. When mixed with impurities, silicon improves its ability to absorb and convert solar energy into electricity. A prime example of impurities used within silicon to achieve higher efficiency is gallium. Furthermore, it is a lightweight material. It has a low mass to weight ratio, making it an excellent choice for photovoltaic solar panels. This means it's a feasible substrate material for silicon solar panels to be deposited onto. We've heard a lot about new generation solar panels such as perovskite, which can convert 50% of sunlight into electricity. Indeed, this is a significant advancement in the photovoltaic industry. However, this new generation design still faces several challenges that need to be addressed before it can be widely implemented. One major issue is the stability of the perovskite structure used in solar panels. Perovskite structures easily aggregate together at low temperatures, as we've seen before, but they also tend to easily separate. Even the charge passing through perovskite solar panels can create defects and destroy the perovskite structure. Additionally, external factors such as humidity, heat, oxygen, and ultraviolet light can further break it down and quickly degrade its record-breaking efficiency. To put it in perspective, it took about 30 years for Tesla's silicon solar panels to reach the level of degradation that parallel perovskite solar panels are currently facing. Therefore, perovskite is not a viable replacement option at the moment. If perovskite were to be used anywhere, it would need to be cheaper than the conventional crystalline silicon per watt. The installation of silicon panels today is more expensive than manufacturing them. That means that the limiting factors for solar energy are not production costs, but rather grid connection costs, land permits, or installation labor costs. Furthermore, silicon is currently a stable material, providing long-term durability, and it's widely available. Most importantly, silicon is not as hazardous as other elements like perovskite, as mentioned earlier. Perovskite materials are built upon lead, and its oxide form is highly toxic to both animals and humans posing a significant challenge to perovskite technology. 
Solar panels are similarly affected by temperature. At what level can they operate their best? Many people who are not deeply familiar with or misunderstand photovoltaic power plants often assume that the electricity generation efficiency of such plants would be higher during sunny summer months. However, in reality, if the electricity output of distributed photovoltaic power plants is distributed seasonally, it occurs in spring, autumn, summer, and winter. Despite the abundant sunshine during summer, factors such as high temperatures, humidity, heavy rainfall, and relatively harsh weather conditions can significantly affect the electricity generation process of solar power plants. The daily electricity production of a photovoltaic power plant is related to the local solar irradiance intensity, orientation, and tilt angle of the modules, as well as seasonal weather conditions. The primary factors are radiation and ambient temperature. The scorching summer is often accompanied by high temperatures, while it may not necessarily entail high irradiance levels. Moreover, the temperature characteristics of solar energy modules involve a negative temperature coefficient, meaning that the maximum power of the module decreases as the temperature rises. On average, for each degree increase in operating temperature, the maximum power decreases by 0.42%. High temperatures not only reduce electricity generation capacity, but also lead to the formation of hotspots, which can affect the lifespan of components. The so-called hotspot effect means that under certain conditions, solar modules with significantly poorer electrical characteristics will be used as a load to consume energy by other solar modules. Consequently, the temperature of the solar module will increase significantly. The hotspot effect is believed to occur. Statistics show that the hotspot effect in photovoltaic power plants can directly shorten the lifespan of solar modules by 30% potentially causing module damage in the long run. The temperature of the cell affected by the hot spot effect will increase along with the increase in radiation, which is why summer is the peak season for photovoltaic power plants. In addition to affecting solar modules, high temperature environments also impact the performance of traditional photovoltaic inverter units. Since inverters are often installed outdoors, even under direct sunlight, the internal temperature of the inverter will correspondingly increase in high temperature environments during summer. Inside the inverter are many electronic components, all of which have designated operating temperatures. If the ambient temperature is too high, the temperature will quickly rise when the inverter operates at full power. If cooling is inadequate at this time, the heat of the electronic components will accumulate in the enclosure, resulting in excessively high temperatures. In certain cases, the inverter may stop operating, and the accelerated aging of components will shorten its lifespan. Moreover, high temperature environments can cause inverters to be protected due to overheating, and reducing the load will affect the electricity generation process of the power station. However, solar panels using silicon have advantages and are more heat resistant than usual. So hotspot effects only reduce the module's lifespan by around 10% and help solar panels absorb light better without causing reflection. During frigid winter months, a common issue we face is snowfall covering the surface of solar panels, reducing their light absorption capability. Although the weather in some regions in Canada can be extremely cold, sunlight is still present. Silicon solar panels are typically designed to operate in harsh weather conditions even down to minus 40 degrees Celsius or lower, as temperatures drop, the efficiency of solar panels can significantly decrease. Even if the temperature drops to minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 45.6 degrees Celsius, silicon solar panels can still operate with reduced efficiency without experiencing durability issues as in summer. The specific durability of silicon solar panels in extreme temperature condition needs careful consideration as it depends on various factors such as material quality, solar panel design, and specific operational conditions. Ultimately, what we need is to regularly maintain and clear these solar panels during winter to remove thick layers of snow by adjusting the tilt of the panels to achieve optimal efficiency. How long would the life cycle of this solar panel last? It's fantastic that this silicon comes from a single crystal. This type of silicon appears black within the cells and features pyramid-like patterns, enhancing the surface area for improved light collection in silicon photovoltaic cells. This special type of silicon can maintain durability over a long period, 
Once properly processed and combined with other materials, it can sustain optimal functionality for 30 to 35 years. However, it can generate electricity for much longer. Additionally, new materials, designs, and practices can help reduce the environmental impact of PV manufacturing by minimizing waste, energy usage, negative health effects, and pollution. Furthermore, Tesla warranties its solar panels for 25 years, ensuring they operate at 85% capacity. This means that the solar energy system is maintained or replaced entirely free of charge during the first 10 years. How to reuse silicon from end-of-life photovoltaic modules. According to the International Renewable Energy Agency, end-of-life PV waste accumulation in the United States is projected to be around a million tons by 2030. In other words, there are 200 million tons of solid waste, excluding recyclable materials and mixtures, generated in the United States every year. Although currently, most issues regarding lifespan are caused by weathering and installation errors, some consumers and plant operators may choose to upgrade their panels before the warranty expires or take advantage of technological advancements. Recycling processes for silicon photovoltaic modules already exist, but in the U.S., the total cost of recycling is higher than the cost of landfill and disposal. Focusing on end-of-life management of PV systems will help the U.S. Department of Energy's Solar Energy Technologies Office reduce the environmental impact of solar energy and ultimately make solar energy more affordable. Scientists have proposed using recycled silicon from discarded solar panels to manufacture the positive electrodes for batteries. They've combined recycled silicon powder with lead and created a synthetic material believed to have superior electrochemical performance. According to conventional technical methods such as acid and alkali leaching, one ton of end-of-life PV modules can recover 40 kilograms of silicon material, potentially generating a net income of $104.90. If the recycled silicon material is combined with lead using a simple ball milling process to obtain silicon carbon composite electrodes, it could generate a revenue of $1,883. These cells were previously mechanically removed from the modules and then cut into small pieces. These pieces were then soaked in toluene solution for 24 hours to dissolve their ethylene vinyl acetate encapsulant. Waste from expired solar panels presents opportunities to recover valuable materials and create employment through recycling. According to the International Renewable Energy Agency, the cumulative value of raw materials that can be recovered from end-of-life solar panels globally is estimated to be around $450 million by 2030, equivalent to the raw material costs needed to produce approximately 60 million new panels. Transitioning solar panels from landfills to recycling helps save space in landfills while realizing the value of raw materials. Many components of these can be recycled. Glass constitutes the majority of the weight of a solar panel, about 75%, and glass recycling has been a long-standing industry. Other recyclable materials include aluminum frames, copper wires, and plastic junction boxes. After thermal processing, the green hardware is physically separated, 80% of this can be readily reused, while the remaining portion has been refined. The silicon wafers, known as wafer cells, are reused for manufacturing new silicon modules or added to electric vehicle batteries, leading to an 85% silicon material recycling rate. Are you ready to use this new technology for your home? How effective will it be for your family? We hope this video provided you with a sense of relaxation. If it resonated with you, Kindly show your support by liking the video and joining the Tesla Car World family through subscribing to our channel. Be sure you don't miss out on any of our fantastic content by hitting the bell icon. Your feedback and time are immensely appreciated. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you soon. Until then, stay safe and enjoy life.